if I told you all the things that I'm thinking of doing, um, your, you, your eyes would roll. I mean, I, I don't know actually. I mean, there are many things I'm interested in doing and I actually want some time to sort that out. One of the other wonderful things about this opportunity is that you can create yourself as an academic. There is the teaching responsibilities, but in terms of what I want to write, I mean, the field is really open. Um, I, I have actually three categories of writings. So one are, is actually two, the first category is two other books. One is about being a judge, and I think written about in a different way than people have written about it. Uh, I mean, it's not the abstract, how do you decide cases, the relationship between facts and law. It is very much about what judging in the 21st century is like, the kinds of pressures uh, on judges, pressures that people don't understand, not the political pressures. Um, sometimes it's, uh, it's, it's political with a small p rather than a big p. It's the pressure to duck, to evade, to avoid making a decision, to dismiss cases um, rather than to engage with cases. It's, um, and I want to write about that because I think it's the reverse of the activist debate. Um, it's almost as if you have to get through layers of highly technical, formal rules before you can even consider whether you'll be an activist because you can't get to the merits in habeas and uh, civil rights cases, in prisoner cases, even in stockholders' derivative cases. Um, so I want to write about that and the implications of that for, the, um, for, for judging and for the law. And then I, I also have in mind a, a, a story uh, about a man I sentenced who was supposedly a member of a gang and he was dealing crack and I sentenced him to um, as little as I could under the circumstances and we kept in touch over the years and when he left prison he reported to me which of course isn't what you're supposed to do but we stayed in touch and I watched him struggle with the you know on a personal level with the impact of mass incarceration he when he got out of jail, he didn't. The world was an alien place to him. He didn't know how to set up phone service. Um, and then one day, after I thought he was doing well, we got word that he had been executed on the streets of Boston, and no one knew why and how. And I, I actually wanna, I wanna find out because I think that that reflects on. Um, I want to understand how his punishment, if at all, played into that. Whether he was the person I saw, was he really someone else? I, I do a fair, or have done a fair amount of uh, international human rights work. My husband and I have done that together. And that has been extraordinarily meaningful, which is to, to be able to speak about, to go to countries where sometimes their human rights issues are where we were 20 years ago. And to recapture that meaningful work is, is wonderful. So, I don't know. <laughs> I mean. You know, I, I, uh, having an identity crisis at this age is fabulous. You know, I really recommend it.